Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about common problems with BMW M340i X Drive with the B58 TU engine specifically. Let's get into it. To begin with, mine is a 2020 model year, which has some differences from the 2021 model year and upwards. The major mentioning worthy differences are the tunability and the oil pump design in which the oil pump is our first topic about the common problems. The 2020 model year has a different oil pump design than the 2021 onwards. It has plastic components inside the oil pump versus metal components on the 2021 models that's considered the quote unquote updated oil pump. The plastic components inside the oil pump are more prone to failure than the updated oil pump. I had not experienced the oil pump actually failing on me per se. The first sign will be that you won't be able to immerse your oil on the so-called digital dipstick. And by the time it goes to 17% to 20%, something like that, while you're immersing your oil, it will fail to continue and kick you back out to the main menu. Mine had problems measuring oil intermittently. If I start to immerse your oil right after a long drive, it would usually fail by like 20%. But if I immerse it right after letting it cool down for say 15 to 30 minutes or so, it would immerse your oil just fine. This is what's reported to be the first sign for the oil pump with plastic components failing. While I cannot verify, there are speculations saying it's because the oil pressure is higher than the tolerance level while you're measuring the oil, as if you are putting your foot down on the throttle. And that's why the system fails to measure how much oil is inside your engine. There are also others saying they have experienced abnormal oil pressure that's being too high during wide open throttle, which is putting your foot down basically. And that's definitely not a good thing for the engine either. But with all that being said, if your car cannot merge your oil through the digital dipstick, it doesn't necessarily mean your oil pump is going bad, but it's just your first sign to tell you to be mindful of oil, your oil level, any potential overheating issue, any abnormal oil pressure. As mentioned earlier, I had intermittent issue about measuring oil, but I had not experienced any abnormal oil pressure prior to oil pump replacement. I had a local shop to replace my oil pump with the updated version as preventive maintenance, as I plan on keeping the car for a long, long time. Again, it's just something to keep in mind about. Now that we're talking about oil measurement, let's do one and I can move on to the next topic about common problems with the M340i, specifically the B58TU engines. So that includes the Toyota Supra Mark V as well. While the oil measurement is running, I'm just going to spill the beans about the next topic, which is oil consumption on the B58TU. Little background story here, I had my last oil change just a little over 5,000 kilometers ago. I usually change my oil every 5,000 to 8,000 kilometers on most cars I own, depending on several factors, but which I'm not going to talk about in this video. It's mainly about the type of oil you use and what kind of engine it is. After doing some research, mine is not the only B58 TU that burns oil. It's relatively common within the community to report about it. I assume one of the reasons for oil consumption is that BMW calls for 0W20 for its engine oil. Nowadays, most manufacturers call for thinner oil than engines that were built back in the days because of way tighter internal components clearance. While a thicker oil may prevent and stop oil consumption, in the long run, some parts may not get lubricated as they should because you're running a thicker oil than what it's rated for. As you can see on my iDrive screen, my engine oil is at the minimum level. I'll have to add 2 liters of engine oil immediately. I actually measured my oil yesterday. It was right here, just a quarter over minimum between maximum. It is what it is. I'm just going to send an oil sample to get it analyzed and see if there's anything odd that's going on for safe measure. But this is also one of the reasons why I always carry a small jug of oil and a bottle of premix cool in my trunk at all times, which I'm going to make a separate video about what I carry in my trunk at all times. You know, just for fun. But back to the topic of oil consumption, I don't think it's an issue necessarily. I truly believe turbocharged engines are more prone to create blow and consume oil, generally speaking. 
there is a statement somewhere on the internet indicating it's normal for the B-58s to burn a liter of oil every 1,500 miles of driving, depending on driving style and traffic conditions. I mostly travel in the city with stop and go traffic and some occasional fun. I'm not really surprised that it's eating oil as the statement goes. And next, we're going to step out of the car. The next common problem we're going to talk about is the rear differential leaking. There actually is a vent on top of the differential to vent on any excess fluid. Specifically, it's going to happen when it reaches higher temp during track time. I changed my rear diff fluid recently. I also have a separate video in my channel going over how to change rear diff fluid on BMW M340i and other models with rear LSD. So make sure you check that out too. And in my case, I didn't see any sign of leaking prior to changing it, nor after changing it. So I'm not too concerned about that. Just got to perform a routine checkup at the rear diff every now and then, just to make sure there is no signs of leaking. Last thing you want is to run the rear diff bone dry and have it explode on you. Next up, we're going to move over to the front at the engine bay. The B58 motor itself is pretty reliable, bulletproof, and can take on quite some beating. The motor will be kind to you as long as you keep up with your routine maintenance. That includes checking up on your coolant level. This is your main expansion tank for coolant, and this is your auxiliary expansion tank for your charge cooler system. Just make sure that they are not low on coolant. If they are, you're going to check for leaks. You're going to see some white greenish residual by this area right here. Top them up as necessary, as well as checking your water pump that's going to be way down there. Chances are that they might leak when they age as well. If it happened, you should see some coolant residual by this area as well. At that point, make sure you get the system checked out or else you risk of overheating the engine and resulting in a catastrophic failure. And for the next one, let's move on to the other side of the engine bay and talk about the valve cover and valve cover gasket. Just check routinely on your valve cover and see if there would be any oil residual. You may see some road grime that's normal, but not oil or oil residual. Take care of the problem, be it a valve cover gasket or the valve cover itself. Do it sooner than later, or else you're just going to be losing oil. The computer is pretty intelligent to be able to tell you that your engine's low on oil, just like how I showed you earlier with the so-called digital dipstick when you're measuring your oil. If that happened, the first thing you should check is going to be your valve cover and see if there is any signs of leaking. Then the next thing you should check is going to be the oil filter housing that's way back there at the engine. Lastly, let's hop back into the car and talk about my ownership experience for the past half a year that I've owned it. I've put on about 12,000 kilometers since I've owned it, which is approximately 7,500 miles. I've changed oil several times, I've done the front and rear differential fluid, spark plugs, and as mentioned earlier, I had a local shop to replace a 2020 model year oil pump with the updated version of it that's with metal components inside because I wasn't able to measure oil and I like to keep the car in the long term. It took me 2500 Canadian dollars to replace the oil pump, parts and labor included which isn't too bad in my opinion since I'm keeping the car. I like to have it run as happy as possible. I haven't experienced anything mechanically that's gone wrong so far, but note that the car has lots of features that are supported by numerous electronic systems and sensors. That means there are more components to potentially go wrong, unfortunately. My front bumper was scraped at a parking lot when I went to pick up my pizza dinner There is this one time. As a result, I believe my bumper is slightly misaligned and still is. One of the sensors for the 360 camera fell off from being scraped. I had to take off the wheel, the fender liner to pop the sensor back in place. After that, the warning for the sensor disappeared and hasn't come back so far. That was great for me since I have the tools to raise the vehicle, to take off the wheel, the fender liner to fix the issue, but others may not have the knowledge 
the scan tool to even know which sensor went wrong, or the tools to raise the vehicle, take off wheels, etc., etc. And that would be a five hundred to a thousand dollar bill potentially to be fixed at a shop if you're not exactly a DIY enthusiast. That's something to keep in mind at while you're shopping for a new car, any car really, with these features. But all in all, I hope this video was helpful to you, and that you have now known more about the G chassis BMW, specifically those that are equipped with a B50TU engine. And if it was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up to beat the YouTube algorithm and I share with others who are also pursuing the B50 dreams like I once had. Also consider subscribing, but that's it for this video, and catch you in the next one.